Okay. Now the lab manual asks a very, very difficult question. We don't really have the evidence to really say for sure what's going on. But the lab manual is asking, is the assumption that respiration in this background occurs at this constant rate all the time in the background or when it's photosynthesizing, does this respiration rate slow down? Okay. Clearly right here, if we have this line going up here, Okay, we had medium light. The difference between this line here in the dark and this line here is the Calvin cycle cranking giving us that difference. This slope actually goes upward, which means that respiration was occurring in the light. So we have evidence right here that respiration does occur in the light, and it occurs at a pretty solid clip because this difference is due to the light, and we had fairly um, high amounts of light on it. So we know that respiration doesn't completely shut down. I think the question in the lab manual, though, is that um, is a question related to gen biology in general and principles of biology. Basically, one of the big principles of biology that you'll um, learn about a lot and deal with a lot in second semester biology lab is basically how organisms are adapted to conserve as much energy as possible. So when we look at the environment, a key limiting factor to pretty much every organism is the amount of energy that's available for whatever needs to be done. So there are a lot of things that need to be done, you know, for a plant, a plant can grow faster, it can make more flowers, it can make more pollen, it could, you know, try to get up in the light so it's going to make more leaves or something like that. So all plants are pretty much limited on the amount of energy that they have. And saving energy is a general principle of, for plants and animals and everything. So a big question then is, can a plant actually save energy? So when we're thinking about this process, we have the light collection. The light collection goes through and it makes ATP and NADPH. If from light collection we have ATP, then we basically take that ATP and ATPH and we go and crank the Calvin cycle to make glucose. What ends up happening with that glucose that we make from the plant? Okay, what ends up happening with that glucose is that it then basically goes to the mitochondria. Mitochondria break it down to make ATP. So a simple question is, if we have ATP in the first place from light collection, and we utilize that ATP from light collection to go in and make glucose, simply to break down that glucose and make ATP, why didn't the plant use the ATP directly? Because in the second law of thermodynamics, right, in any chemical reaction, some energy is lost as heat. Therefore, by making up glucose and breaking down that glucose to make ATP, we lose a little bit as heat. Okay, so why did the plant go in and make glucose from ATP, lose some energy when it breaks down the glucose to make ATP? And the reason for that is that ATP is um, very reactive. So ATP can be used up locally, but it can't ever be stored and used long term. So the reason a plant takes the ATP to make glucose to make ATP is that glucose is long term storage and it can be mobilized. So the plant can take that glucose, move it down to the shoots, move it down to the roots, right? And then it can go to the various cells and it can be harnessed when the plant needs it, especially at times when sun is not available. So all through the night, then that respiration rate can be used to um, keep the metabolism of the plant going and keep all of those cells alive when you don't have the direct ATP. But if a plant could then, indirectly decouple the ATP locally right there when it's going through photosynthesis, then it might do that for the small components within that cell. So within an individual cell, right, if we have a chloroplast right here around that chloroplast, if you're making ATP, then you might utilize that ATP for the functions of the cell and you wouldn't need to respire as fast when photosynthesis is going on. However, in the background, since we have this big clip of uh, respiration going on, for this lab, we're going to then, in order to calculate out photosynthesis, we're going to take the rate of respiration, subtract that from the rate of respiration plus photosynthesis to get us the rate of photosynthesis.